Hey, welcome back. So um, I'm doing a second stream today because uh, I had this idea I wanted to work on really quick and I thought I might as well stream it. So earlier today I was talking about uh, building a, an admin dashboard for my Airbnb project and that got me thinking that maybe I could make it easier to just build um, tables like this one just in general. And I think we can do it. So um, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to convert this into a reusable component and then I'll use it for bookings. Now, OK, let me close this up for now and go to the Vulkan admin package, or actually Vulkan core. Here in components, I'm going to create a new cable component. And um, For now, yeah, okay, Let, let's keep it simple. Let's just return register. We probably want the current user. Um, so that should work for now. Okay, now let's import it. Go to admin, components, admin home. So um, admin, okay, so we have a search form here. So the idea is we would bring this, that search form into the um, table component. So I'm actually gonna use this, this whole thing as a base. Um, So, I think I want to, yeah, react. So for the admin list, we have the admin users list here, which looks like this. And that's where we are, at, are actually doing the uh, iterating and we have with list and so on. So um, I might copy this over as well. And uh, so we're not going to do export default. So this will be the, the outer table with the search form. And this will be the inner table, um, which we will call uh, table contents maybe and this one could be table wrapper and then we will um, x register table wrapper yeah so Uh, and the query, okay, is inputted by the state, the update query function. Now we probably, okay, let, let's find the good name because table is, well, we, we'll use the class table later because that's a, a bootstrap class. Um, let's call it data table. So data table, data table search. Um, name value on change that doesn't change. Okay, this this part is good. Now here we're getting the results loading load more count total count network status. Now one thing we do want here um, actually is to pass the collection. Uh, because you know, this will 
instead of only showing users like it does now, we want it to adapt for any collection. So data table list. So this this is a table, and now things are getting interesting. So um, <clears throat> admin columns. Where is that coming from? So that's something we're importing from Vulkan Core. And um, so we want to make this more flexible. So we will probably take a list of columns here in a, actually, let's call it table. So we're, we're going to give it some props just so we, um, prop types, I mean, just so we keep everything straight. So there will be the collection. Uh, as well as a list of columns. And we'll pass on both. Yeah, it's probably easier to just do. Just do this, so columns right here. So anytime we have admin columns here, we can use columns instead. Um, we have, well, should we give our data table a name or use the name of a collection maybe? Well, yeah, let's use this. I'm gonna, I'll change that later. Um, and then results, so these should be good. It'll be a document, I guess, instead of being a, a user. So document equals document, document ID, and then that will be data table. Yeah, if I'm calling it data table, I probably should use that same uh, that same language everywhere. You know, just to keep things on making sense. So let's call it the data table. Data table item will create it uh, really soon. And then if has more is loading more, compose is loading, load more, that should be good. And options here, oh, okay. So let's, um, let's think about that. We have to do this inside this component, actually. The reason why is because this will depend on the props that we receive. So collection here is gonna be this props collection. We are, well, let's um, accept a fragment name, which will be optional. So um, let's just say Or, you know what, actually, should it be an options prop? Yeah, let's do this instead. This way we can do Okay, and now we have to take care of the data table item. So here um, in the admin user list, it's admin users item, which looks like this. So I'm gonna use it as space. 
I'm starting to think, I wonder if I should make all of these uh, separate components. You might want to override them. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll do that later. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not... Okay, you know what, let's do this. So we'll register each of them separately. And uh, we can get rid of this. And this one is data table contents. Meaning that we can now do um, Oh, and yeah, is that correct? That looks looks more or less correct. So we are. I'm gonna um, hmm, gonna add some separators in there. Um, okay, let, let's just do it like this. So I want to keep everything in the same file because uh, it's all related and it's all going to be in core. But usually yeah, these would be separate files. Okay. And uh, again here, so we should have the columns and user. Let's use current user to stay consistent. Um, data table item, so we pass the user here. So wait, how come? Um, No, oh, that's sorry. That's the head. Yeah, admin users item user and key. Oh right, no, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting all mixed up. The user in this case is not a current user. It's the document. So, and do we had that right document and key? And in addition to that, we want to pass columns. Okay, right. So here we it's current columns and document. And so every time we see user in there, replace it with document. And um, so the way this works is you it will take the component used to display the cell, the, the table cell from the columns object. And um, yeah, it's up to you to um, to provide it separately. Uh, so remove users from the column name. Do we need to do that? Uh, I don't know. And component. So okay, that should be enough. And to know if this works, we would have to replace I guess, yeah, adding users right here with components dot data table collection equals users and then um what's what are our other props? Um, columns and options. So columns equals let me see admin columns and uh, last one was options equals and these would be the options for the with list things so this right there uh, 
uh, let, let's add some better formatting so we know what's going on. Now, I highly doubt that this will work on the first try. But, you know, let's see. With list is not defined, that makes sense. So in the meantime, I want to remove that console.log. Yeah. So I thought I had removed it, but maybe it's still the file updating bug I was running into earlier. So with list wasn't defined, that's, well, actually, oh yeah, yeah, here. That's easy enough. So that's really something that should be caught by linting, but I, um, I don't have it enabled on this project for some weird reason. So I really need to look into that. Also use prettier and other like improvements. So it's still not defined. Um, yeah, it's right here. Okay. I wonder why I'm not getting the same error on the server. Hmm. I mean, I'm definitely importing it. So I'm importing it from, oh, uh, okay, okay. No. Because I'm already in core, um, I should import it from, from, uh, okay, yeah, this, this is a real error this time. Let's see, containers with this jazz. Because usually I will always do import uh, such, and such and such from Vulkan core, but here we are in the core package, so we cannot do that. We have to import it from the actual file. Okay, components is not defined. It might be the same problem. Um, yeah, I haven't imported it. Oh, right, I know why I'm not getting the, the errors on the server. It's because I'm using, um, this is loaded using uh, dynamic imports in an asynchronous way, so it's not server rendered, actually. So yeah, that's why. Otherwise, like, these errors would all prevent the, the build. Okay, so it looks like we are trying to render stuff uh, without having it loaded. So, let's um, Let's do this. I kind of want to see if this is getting the, the data that's, that that uh, width list right here should give it. So props loading true, um, loading true, loading false, results, it is getting the users, so that looks correct. And now the prop user is marked as required in avatar, but its value is undefined. Uh, we might be... 
Okay, let's see where this uh, avatar thing is coming into play. Uh, let's go back to our admin package and our um, columns. So uh, let's see. Okay, so our columns are here and yeah, so I think it's admin user's name. So the user prop is not getting passed down. Um, Right, so it's uh, basically right because okay, no, no, that makes total sense because uh, our prop is now named document and not user. So yeah, all of this needs to be user. Or we could say this maybe. I'm always looking for occasions to use this syntax. It's kind of cool. So we're saying we're receiving the prop as document, but using it as user. How cool is that? Okay, it's not that cool apparently, because it didn't solve our problem. Huh. Okay, so div username user equals user. Time for some uh, inspection. Admin home, data table with list data table contents um okay now data table item so that should be one row so it's getting the right document but yeah it's things are probably breaking down because of the document slash user problem Well, okay, I guess. Maybe my, my fancy syntax doesn't work the way I think it does. I don't know. Let's see what the component is receiving first and try and see what we can try. So, um, oh, okay. Oh, okay, we're passing the whole thing. So there is no document. Oh, okay. Got it. So I think we should pass, right, instead of passing a single document prop that contains all of this, we're passing all that on the props object. So where is that uh, happening? Here, component equals com component, uh -huh. and then component document equals document. So I would 
think that we would have a document prop here. Oh, sorry, no, my bad. I'm looking at the wrong wrong line. Okay, so we do have document, and we do have user. Okay, so what the hell? Why is this not um, smart as required in avatar, but its value is undefined? So the user is clearly defined here. Just getting confused with all my components here. So user is defined here. So well, it should be defined here as well. Oh, because now it's called user. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, tripping, tripping on my own code here. Okay. Yeah. So here we're receiving as document and passing it on as user. And from then on, it's just called user. So that makes total sense. And uh, I'm gonna go back to the way things were. So this guy is getting renamed and then from then on it's just user. Cool, uh, let me check I didn't make the same mistake here, no. Okay. Now things might work cannot treat property email of undefined. Okay, this time in users, admin users email. Um, so I would expect that this would also get a document. Can I do, can I do this? I think I can. Apparently this guy is not getting document properly. No, I don't want to log out the whole document. Weird. Let, let's so apparently I've just learned something if you like inside the inside JSX like document corresponds to document JavaScript object so I mean we do have a document object on our prop right So I would expect if I do if I do this, that should work. Okay. So what's different here? Okay, I guess that works. I wonder if it's still that, that stupid bug with files not, not changing. because I can't see anything I'm doing different that would make it work. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, so now something different. Cannot read property rooms of undefined and admin users rooms. 
Uh, what's admin users rooms again? Right, it's the yeah, uh, the special column that we are adding and we are having the exact same problem. Document user, document user, and document user. Now this is different than if I were to write document equals user, that would mean uh, use user as the default value for document if it's not provided. But document colon user is, says alias out the document uh, variable as user. Wow. And it looks like we made it. We rebuilt our admin table without needing any of that admin code anymore. So basically we can go in here and delete this, delete that, delete that, and this as well. Not bad. Now the real test though is whether we can adapt this for our uh, bookings admin. So not this one, this one. So now we have, uh, we're uh, using the card component. So let me let me bring it up for you. Okay, yeah, it's complaining because of course I'm uh, still importing those modules maybe. Yeah, so We're gonna replace this by the uh, data table. And this, oh, okay. I think I, <laughs> maybe I deleted too much stuff, actually. I don't think it's supposed to look like this. Okay, uh, uh, let's fix that first. So why would uh, did what what did I do that would remove all these columns because they are created here in columns.js. So I think all I need to do is this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's replace this by our new uh, data table component. So collection uh, bookings, columns, well, we don't have any columns yet. Sh uh, what should we do? We should, um, 
let's create some then. And we can look at our uh, admin columns for that. Now, I'll just start with two columns. Uh, so one would be at the bookings dot, uh, what does a booking have? Start, check-in date, and check-out date. So, so it's at 10.20. And I think we can just do uh, I think we can just do this. Maybe maybe this. And then options, we will not pass a fragment or yeah, none of this. So uh, yeah, let's remove it. Okay, and so we'll remove this and see what we get. Okay, not quite. Oh wow, how many times am I gonna do the exact same mistake today? Cool, cool. Now you can see we have uh, this search uh, field right now and it's not gonna work. And it wouldn't be super interesting on bookings. I guess you could search by date, um, but I'm not even sure. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be very fun, but let's do, uh, let's duplicate this and do a rooms list component that will look very similar. Um, oh, and by the way, we don't need this anymore. We, yeah, we don't need that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it here too because now the all the the data just comes from um, the data table component, so we don't need the higher order components uh, with list and with current user. So. This guy doesn't have any props, and we can simplify our code. Okay. So again, rooms, rooms list, and this will be let's say rooms dot name, and now rooms dot description. Now it's gonna get a bit repetitive creating components for every single column or cell, so I'll probably use a default component. Um, but for now, you know, that will do. And um, yeah, so rooms list, room name, room description. So this should be, well, we don't even, no, we do need it, need it because we need to pass it to the collection. Uh, we have our columns. This could be called rooms list. Uh, rooms. I'm gonna use a singular for here as well, actually. I'm gonna create a new route for our new admin dashboard. Um, where are my routes here?
Yes. I should change this. Well, pretty nice, right? So we have our admin table. Of course, you know, it, it doesn't do much right now. It's very, very labor intensive because you need to specify components. You need to specify every single column. Uh, but we're going to at least uh, implement the search. So the reason why um, search works for users is because um, let me find uh, the right file parameters, maybe. Yeah, we have uh, this that's added to the user's parameters called callback, which in essence means that any time that uh, a resolver for users uh, is receiving terms from the client and it uh, tries to interpret those terms, if it finds a query parameter on those terms, it's going to transform that into a Mongo selector using regular expressions. Now, we don't want to have to manually create these uh, callback hooks for every collection we want to make searchable. Instead, I had a much better idea. I'm going to add a new searchable parameter on the fields that need to be searchable. So uh, when we have rooms here in the room schema, I'm going to go to name and say searchable true. And I'll do the same thing for description. Or actually, uh, I'm not going to do that. Well, yeah, okay, no, I'll, I'll do that for now. Now, this will throw an error because searchable uh, is not a valid property, but we'll uh, add it in the schema, probably in lib, maybe in config. Yeah. Searchable. And now, um, when we are initializing a new collection, so here we have all our parameters callback. So what I'm gonna do is, after I've, uh, we've done all of this, uh, remove any null fields, extend sort, blah, 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 we're gonna look for uh, terms Um, a query property in the terms object and deal with it accordingly. So if we have a query, we're gonna do this, whatever that was. And then um, we're gonna extend the parameters with this. Now, this is where our new searchable field will come in very handy because instead of just, you know, having this uh, hand coded list of fields, we can iterate over every searchable field. So what will that look like? Basically, we'll want to have an array called searchable fields. Uh, we'll want to take the schema for, of the collection. Are we using that anywhere around here? Yeah, schema. Yeah. And then um, so what should we do? We're going to want to only keep the field of the schema where field.searchable is, is true. And well, OK, let's stop here for, for now and just log this out. And actually, we'll also log out the terms here and the parameters here. Uh, 
Uh, so searchable is not a supported property again, even though I added it in uh, config, so I'm not sure what's going on. Like it's right there. I'm not sure what you're uh, expecting from me. I think we're almost done. Like. We basically just need to figure out if we are uh, getting the right fields. So I'm gonna type in match here. Okay, so the query, okay, this is not defined. Makes sense, so. Um, Perfect. And I'm also going to log out the, the schema object. OK, so what do you know? We have our two searchable forms of uh, fields, I mean. And now we just need to get their names. So we don't actually have uh, their names here because we are, um, the names would be the key. So how do we get the keys? Let's check our uh, documentation here. Um, maybe filter is not the right, yeah, okay, so what we need to do actually is keys and then take the keys of the schema. Or rather, filter, but, okay, yeah. That should give us the name of the fields instead of just the entire field object itself. So we don't have, um, we have to re enter our search query here. Uh, field is not defined. Yeah, it's schema field name. Yes, not field, field name. Okay, name description, looking good. And now this gives us, I'm gonna call it schema field names. So we know it's just the names. And then instead of entering the array manually, we'll say uh, searchable field names dot map. And that's gonna be a field name, which we map to an object that contains the field name as its property and this stuff as the rest of the object. And now let's see what happens. Oh, error. That's what happens. Right, because this should be in parenthesis as well. So we don't have any search query again, but we're going to enter one. Oh, yeah, OK. Almost there, almost there. And we got there, we have a search. You can see that, uh, well, it doesn't print out the full selector because 
it's um you know you can see the object but that's this or is actually this one and as you can see only the search only the the, the item with the search terms in its name uh, has appeared here and if I clear this out everything is back if I say Ching only this one so it's working so just to make this clear, we now have a, a data table component that is fully searchable out of the box. All, all you need to do is mark fields as searchable in your schema. And that's a pretty big improvement over uh, you know, manually hand coding uh, the table and manually adding a, a search uh, callback to the parameters and all that crap that we had to do before. So I think this is a pretty cool improvement. Um, I'm gonna keep working. I need to internationalize the, the labels here so they go come back. I need to create some kind of default component to display uh, column contents and so on. But I think it's a great start and I'm pretty excited to see what you guys do with this. So thanks for tuning in and uh, see you very soon.